In this video, we're going to take some time to practice what we've learned so far about polynomials, both addition, subtraction, multiplication, as well as factoring. I'll ask you to copy problems down onto a sheet of paper and to give them a try. Once you finish each example, come back to the video and we'll walk through it step by step to see how you're doing. Let's begin with our first example. Write the expression as a polynomial in standard form. Please copy this problem down, pause the video, finish it, and then come back when you're finished. All right, let's see how you did. We begin by copying the problem down. We notice that the operation between these two polynomials, first a binomial and second a trinomial, is multiplication. When we're multiplying, we must use the distributive property. So we'll distribute the 7m to the m squared plus 4m plus 2, and then we'll distribute the minus 1 to the m squared plus 4m plus 2. And we write it down just like this. Now, let's do our distributing. 7m times m squared is 7m to the third. 7m times 4m is 28m squared. 7m times 2 is 14m. And now we're on to the second set. Negative 1 times m squared is minus m squared. Negative 1 times 4m is minus 4m. And negative 1 times 2 is minus 2. Now let's combine like terms. We want to write our final answer in standard form, so let's begin by looking for the term that has the largest exponent. That would be m to the third. There's no other terms that have m to the third in them, so we simply have 7m to the third. Now let's work our way down. Let's go with the m to the seconds. We have 28m squared minus 1m squared. That gives me a total of 27m squared. Now let's go to our m's. We have 14m minus 4m. 14 minus 4 is 10m. And we simply have a constant at the end of minus 2. And so we'll write that at the end. 7m to the third plus 27m squared plus 10m minus 2. Let's take a look at another exercise. This time, we want to perform this operation. Write the expression as a polynomial in standard form. Please pause the video and try this one. Okay, let's see how you did. We notice that the operation between the two polynomials is subtraction. We know that we have to distribute the subtraction as a negative one. And so, I'll begin by copying down the problem, and then I'll distribute that subtraction as a negative one. I keep everything in the first parenthesis, 3a to the third, plus 2, plus 6a. But now I have to distribute that negative as a negative 1. Negative 1 times 4a is minus 4a. Negative 1 times negative 7a to the third is plus 7a to the third. And negative 1 times negative 6 is plus 6. Now that we've done the distributing, we can simply combine like terms. We look for the largest exponent in the whole string of terms here, and we see that that largest exponent is 3. We have 3a to the third plus 7a to the third, giving us 10a to the third. We now have some a's, 6a minus 4a. That gives us a total of 2a's. And we have two constants, a 2 and a 6. 6 and 2 is 8. The difference between the original two polynomials is 10a to the third plus 2a plus 8. Now let's try some factoring. In these exercises, we want to factor each expression completely. Remember, we have three choices when factoring. We can look for greatest common factors. We can look to see if we have a difference of two perfect squares. Or we can combine the two methods. Here's a binomial, 6k to the fourth minus 15k squared. Copy this problem down and see if you can factor it completely. Then come back and let's see how you did. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. We began by copying the binomial down. We start by looking for a greatest common factor. Are there any numbers that divide both 6 and 15 evenly? What? Yes, there are. What is the largest one? That number is 3. We divide both terms by 3, and we end up with 2k to the 4th minus 5k to the 2nd. Now we look again. We check the numbers just to see if we might have forgotten something. Are there any numbers larger than 1 that divide both 2 and 5? No, there aren't. But what about variables? 
we have k to the fourth on the first term and k to the second on the second term. Both terms have k's. We have four k's on the first term and two of them on the second. We take the smallest exponent, k to the second. Divide both terms and we have two k to the second minus five. We take a look again to see if there are any common factors that we might have missed. There's nothing. So we have three k to the second times 2k to the second minus 5. Double check your parentheses. Do we have a difference of two perfect squares in there? We do not, and so this is our final answer in factored form. Let's try another factoring problem. Factor this expression completely. 20r to the fourth minus 28r squared plus 4r. Please pause the video here and let's see how you do. Let's see how you did. We begin by copying the problem down and looking for the largest number that divides 20, 28, and 4. The smallest number is 4, and so that's the largest possible number that could divide all three terms. In fact, 4 does. So we divide all three terms by 4, and we're left with 5r to the fourth minus 7r to the second plus 1r. You might be asking if you have to write the 1 in front of the r on the third term. I strongly recommend it, and I'll show you why in a moment. We now look at the numbers, 5, 7, and 1. Are there any numbers larger than 1 that divide those? No, there aren't, so I'm all set as far as the numbers go. Now let's look at the variables, r to the fourth, r to the second, and r to the first. The smallest power is r to the first, so we factor out a common r. Now we divide each term. We end up with 5r to the third, minus 7r, plus 1. Sometimes when students don't write the plus 1 r in the previous step, they lose the plus 1 down below when they do the division. By writing 1 r, you assure that you're not going to lose that. Now we check our terms again. Are there any other factors in common? No, there aren't. So we take our outside numbers, 4 times r, which is 4 r. We take our inside numbers, 5 r to the third, minus 7 r, plus 1. And now we have our polynomial written in factored form. Let's try another example. How about this one? 9 minus 25 x squared. Please pause the video here and let's see how you do. Let's see how you did with this factoring. We began by copying the problem down and looking to see if there was a greatest common factor. There are no numbers that divide both 9 and 25 so there's no common factor to take out. But what we do have is a perfect square minus a perfect square. We have a difference of two perfect squares. 3 times 3 is 9, 5x times 5x is 25x squared, and those two terms are connected by subtraction. We can factor this as a pair of conjugate binomials, 3 plus 5x and 3 minus 5x. Remember that the order that you wrote the numbers inside the parentheses do matter. You could not write 5x plus 3 and 5x minus 3, because if you multiplied those out, you'd have 25x squared minus 9, not 9 minus 25x squared. So be careful. Let's try one more problem for today. Here is a binomial for you to factor. There are, in fact, two different ways you could factor this. Please pause the video here and give it a try. Let's see how you did and let's see which option you chose. If you followed my general advice, you probably started by copying the problem down and then looked for the common factor. The common factor is 4n squared. When I factor that out, I have 4n squared on the outside and 4n squared minus 9 on the inside of the parentheses. Lo and behold, inside the parentheses is a difference of two perfect squares. 4 is a perfect square, n squared is a perfect square, 9 is a perfect square, and they're connected by subtraction. I can factor that difference of perfect squares into a conjugate pair of binomials, 2n plus 3 times 2n minus 3. Don't forget to bring the common factor down, the 4n squared, and now you have factored the expression completely but perhaps you didn't take out the greatest common factor first. Perhaps you noticed that 16n to the fourth is a perfect square, and 36n squared is also a perfect square, and those two perfect squares are a difference because they're 
connected by subtraction. We can factor this as a difference of two perfect squares, 4n squared plus 6n and 4n squared minus 6n. This looks nothing like the factored form in option 1, but if you look closely at the parentheses, you'll notice that there is a common factor in each of them. If we look at the first one, 4n squared plus 6n, we can divide both numbers by 2 and both terms have an n, so we could factor out a 2n and leave 2n plus 3 in the parentheses. If we look at the second binomial, 4n squared minus 6n, again we see there is a common factor. Both 4 and 6 are divisible by 2 and both terms have at least 1n, so I can factor out a 2n again, leaving me with 2n minus 3. We take the 2n's that we pulled out in front there and we have 2n times 2n, which is 4n squared, and the two parentheses, 2n plus 3 and 2n minus 3. Whichever method you chose doesn't matter as long as you did both the difference of perfect squares and the greatest common factor. And so there you have it. Today we had the opportunity to practice both multiplication and subtraction, as well as work with factoring differences of perfect squares and greatest common factors along with a combination of the two. Remember, if you need help, there's more information in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available on www.dorypublications.com.